Hello and welcome to another edition of Bomb Chew News. My name is Chris, I'm joined by Andron, and today we'll be covering the news that we found interesting. The International Battle Pass for Dota 2 has been released. The Battle Pass contains all the cosmetic goodies and special events that players have come to expect, plus a few new ones as well. Players can look for matches as a coach, offering advice and strategy to a team. Afterwards, players can vote on how effective and helpful they thought the coach was. Valve has also added a new Party Finder option, as well as the ability to avoid certain players entirely, keeping you from ending up in the same team as a player you think is intolerable or just don't get along with. The Battle Pass also brings an updated versus splash screen before each match, as well as the ability to vote on the MVP of your team afterwards. As usual, each purchase of the Battle Pass contributes to the prize pool for this year's International Dota 2 tournament, and this year is already setting record numbers. After only one day of being available, Dota 2 players have already raised the prize pool up to over $7 million, which is over 1.7 million more than was raised at this point during last year's Battle Pass. The Battle Pass is always packed with some amazing cosmetics, emotes, challenges, and just an overall impressive level of content. With the amount of stuff to do and unlock in this year's Battle Pass, it's hard to pass up if you're a Dota player. Senator Josh Hawley has taken the first step towards possible loot box regulation in the US. On his official site, the politician proudly announced the Protecting Children from Abusive Games Act. Hawley's people explain this act as a preventative measure against games seeking to prey on citizens under the age of 18. This bill will prohibit, quote, several forms of manipulative design. This of course includes pay-to-win mechanics where players are enticed to purchase virtual goods to gain a competitive edge in most versions of loot boxes as well. The Senator's post-fingered Candy Crush as a free puzzle game with a Candyland-style aesthetic that is enticing to children. It uses artificial difficulty to force players to purchase upgrades to progress further. Candy Crush and other mobile games were definitely low-hanging fruit for the Senator to focus on. If the bill succeeds, the Federal Trade Commission will force it and treat developers and publishers found guilty of using these tactics as following unfair trade practices. This would also allow the state to sue on behalf of plaintiffs who find a game guilty of employing these practices. This bill being passed will cause monumental changes in the industry and force AAA publishers to rethink how they further monetize their games. EA is looking to expand Apex Legends to both mobile and Chinese markets. During their Q4 earnings call with investors, EA announced that Apex Legends was their fastest growing franchise ever, and that the game had been a major factor in increasing their digital sales by 9%, despite a drop in overall revenues for EA. Even though Apex Legends has had a small drop in Twitch viewership and average daily player counts, EA is still confident in the game's ability to perform and drive sales, and announced that a mobile version of the game would be coming, as well as a version of the game for China. EA executive Blake Jorgensen stated, quote, We are in advanced negotiations to bring Apex Legends to China and to mobile, and we will update you on timeframes when those negotiations are concluded, end quote. This is a smart move from EA, as Apex Legends has taken the battle royale genre by storm since it first launched, and a mobile version seems like the next logical step. PUBG doesn't have the same kind of dominance on the market that it once had, but the mobile version of the game still made an estimated $65 million back in March, so it's safe to say that a mobile Apex Legends could stand to make a lot of money. While I've never been much of a mobile gamer, having spent maybe a few hours on PUBG Mobile, it would still be interesting to see what a mobile version of Apex Legends would look like. If they can manage to make the fast-paced gameplay work on a phone, this could end up as another big hit for Respawn and EA. Platinum Games finally provided a bit more insight into scale bounce cancellation. In a great interview published by Video Game Chronicle, Platinum's Atsushi Inaba was asked a few questions regarding scale bound and he provided what he could. One major point he brought up were that the studio felt the failure of the game was equally their fault as well as Microsoft's. Platinum was taken aback by fan backlash towards Microsoft and according to Inaba, it was tough to watch. The rumors of Scalebound returning as a Switch title were also completely squashed as Inaba confirmed that the IP was owned by Microsoft. While Nintendo and Microsoft are chummier now than before, it'd take a lot of work to wrestle even a dead IP from any AAA publisher. When asked if the company had learned anything from the cancellation of Scalebound, Inaba stated, quote, at the bare minimum, it's unique for us as a title, in so much as we feel that we didn't do all of the things that we needed to do as a developer. There were a lot of painful lessons, but that helped us grow as a studio. End quote. Since the confirmed cancellation of Scalebound in 2017, Platinum Games began self-publishing and work on the next Bayonetta game, Astral Chain, and the mysterious Babylon's Fall. The full interview is a great read that covers far more than Scalebound, and it's nice to have more closure on what may have become a killer IP for the Xbox One. Well, that's all the news that we found interesting today. Let us know what you thought about it down in the comments below, and we'll see you next time. A big thank you to Gabriel Skaggs, Michael Slater, and all awesome patrons for your support.